Joseph fucked Mary. Joseph fucked Mary. What's the point of Joseph being her husband if the spirit is going to get her pregnant? He could have did that without Joseph being there. <laughs> Not only that, why would a spirit impregnate a woman which violates all laws of the scriptures? That would be that would be like the, the spirit of the most high uh, committing adultery with another man's wife. Does that make any logical sense? You marry a woman, spirit comes in and says, hey, I'm going to impregnate your wife. Damn, bro, I didn't even get to hit it, but you impregnate her already? <laughs> so you mean to tell me this man is her husband, never got to hit it, but she's pregnant. And then after the baby is born, then now I can hit it. So I got this, I got the, the leftovers, right? Why would you say some ignorant crap like that? You really going to disrespect the Most High, grieving his Holy Spirit? I mean, no fear of the Most High whatsoever. You claim to be in this truth for years, but all I see is false prophets attached to your name the last two decades. I mean, I don't know whether to call you a comedian, a pop star, or just a flat-out false prophet, but you certainly are no man of Yah. Let's not forget that you a member of this reprobate trinity, this unholy threesome of Creflo Dollar, Pastor Dow and yourself. So how can anyone take what you say serious to begin with? Now, I understand you're trying your hardest to distance yourself from Dow because he became bad for business, but you don't have to commit blasphemy in the process of doing so. Remember what Rufus said about so-called men of Yah promoting false prophets. You just can't find it in the scriptures. Somebody get in the book. Somebody get in this. And give me scripture showing where a man was totally wicked and another man of y'all knew, but y'all kept telling that man, promote this man, promote this man, promote this man, promote this man. So for about eight years, you were constantly promoting Dow, promoting this man, promoting this man, promoting this man. And you supposed to be a man of y'all? Miss me with that. Remember what Gino said. Ain't no need for me to keep fighting somebody on the stand. I may step on dangerous ground. That's true. If I'm wise, the Bible says he that keep his mouth will keep his life. That's right. So if I'm wise, I'm not going to touch it. No. I don't understand it. All right. After I get the explanation, and you explain clearly what it is, and if I'm wise, I'm not going to keep fighting it because no. I don't understand. No. I'm going to consider what's said that God will give me the understanding right. and all things. Yeah, perhaps you should take their advice. See, the problem with you is that Satan keep hitting you with the same left hook you don't see coming because you're so carnal. You keep looking at the outward of men. You, you looked at Dow's homesteads and say, well, this man is building something. He must be a man of Yah. You looked at Creflo Dollar looking at his world dome, looking at the suit and tie, looking at how many members are following him. And you keep getting deceived by that same spirit. And now you're angry with Dow because he's officially the second prominent false prophet who duped you. he has been spewing all this heresy all these years and you still supported this heathen on Patreon, and you're so carnal that you're just now finding this out. Like it or not, you and Dow are one flesh. But I'm going to let him continue, then we'll break down the whole virgin birth thing. These guys are reprobate, these guys are evil, they're wicked, and this is what they do. And my job is to expose the devil. A lot of these cats in these YouTube streets hate me. I don't really care what you hate. We're going to do this work. Because I know a lot of people are not true believers. They're just actors, and they're religious. You know what I mean? The tree is, is known by its fruit. None of these people in these YouTube streets is putting in this level of work. None of these people are breaking down anything. None of them. They're just in the back in the shadows talking crap. You keep saying that you put the most work in on YouTube when you're teaching a lot of false doctrine, which I will expose in this video. You lack understanding on the perpetual impact of blood covenants and how the blood of Jesus was unadulterated. Otherwise, he could not redeem men of their sins. You fail to comprehend how a spirit can take on flesh because God, who is a spirit, made flesh. And the spirit realm is parent to this earth realm. You don't understand exactly why the Most High sentenced the fallen angels to the lake of fire for corrupting the bloodlines of men. And that's how the Gentiles lost their skin pigmentation. They lost their melanin or they inherited a human host without melanin. You always try to explain away spiritual things in the flesh. You don't know the ABCs of demon possession. You don't have the one thing that stands between you and an eternal lake of fire, and that's salvation in Jesus Christ. Let's preach on a whole nother sermon right here. Because you people out there are so steeped in monogamy, you right here. 
because you people out there are so steeped in monogamy, you think that one flesh is only a thing that one flesh is only a man with one woman. Oh boy, man. These people that keep coming into my live chat. Basically, what happened here is someone in his live stream hit him with Isaiah 7, 14, which says, The Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So for seven minutes, he tried to buy time to make up an answer to refute the infallible truth, and he failed miserably. So I'm going to speed up the seven minutes that he delayed, and then we're going to take a look. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Okay. Let me, let me gather myself first before I embarrass this person. Let me do this. Oh boy, oh boy. I realize I want to do some videos about this about how people are upset because you're intelligent and smart. They don't want you to be intelligent and smart. It's like when you're intelligent and smart, everybody's upset. But um, I want to embarrass this person real fast at a Z, right? Let me do this real quick. Now make sure you're reading on the Ring of TV reaction channel because I'm I'm about to embarrass you, right? This is what happens when people don't read. You keep saying people don't read. No, you don't read. Talking about intelligence and being smart do look sin makes you stupid rejection of our god jesus christ is stupid you see your problem is you play too much i've talked about this joker spirit in other videos the scriptures say too much just is not good and demons are very funny until that veil is ripped and it's too late now get a pen and notepad so you can learn something you got to follow the God DNA, which perpetuated from Adam to David, then to Christ, who had the Holy Spirit without measure, according to John 3.34. You can't be born from a sinful man and have the Holy Spirit without measure. It's impossible. In Psalm 51.5, King David said, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin. My mother conceived me. Christ obviously could not be shaping in iniquity because he had to redeem men from sin. Christ is described as the last Adam, a life giving spirit. He's described as this in 1 Corinthians 15 45. Adam was created by God, Christ is God. So you never ask, where's Adam's earthly father? Because we know that God who is a spirit, created Adam. Okay, so obviously we all don't get here through the seed of a man. The seed of a man is a derivative of the creator, the most high God. Man's DNA traces back to the creator, the most high God. The God DNA bypassed the sin that was in David's lineage. And through the time travel, that's how you get God in the flesh. Again, in order for Christ to die for your sins, no sin could be attached to his existence from the time he was conceived. According to Galatians 3.13, Christ became a curse for our sake. So this is different from David being shaped in iniquity in Psalm 51.5. You may say, well, how is he the son of David? The Hebrew lineage was established by faith and obedience. Otherwise, Terah, who is Abraham's father, he would have been the father of many nations. Okay? Due to Abraham's faith, God made him the first Hebrew because Abraham was originally a Chaldean. In addition to that, if the seed line was strictly based on natural birth, then why is Esau cut off and the 12 tribes of Israel is established through Jacob? But I have to break this down in the second part of this video. Let's conclude this video by going to Matthew chapter 1. Then we'll go to Luke chapter 3. 
we already covered Isaiah 7, 14, which tells you Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Okay, he'll be born of a virgin. I don't know how much clearer it gets than that. But for the sake of transparency and rightly dividing the word of truth, I'm going to break down Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 3 real quick. Okay, I'm not going to read all of this verbatim in Matthew chapter 1. We're just going to skim through the, the main portion. It says, The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Okay, verse 2. It says, Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. So this is where you get the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, again, Abraham, the fathers that came before him are not mentioned in this genealogy. See, if you're reading this for the first time, you would think that the Bible was just given short version. No, it purposely did not mention the fathers that came before Abraham because the covenant was spiritual. You get that. The covenant is spiritual. This is how David, Christ is the son of David because David was obedient to the most high for the most part. Okay, so there's a spiritual covenant here. There's scripture that say those who obey God are the sons of God. All right. In addition to that, again, Adam was the son of God. Adam didn't have a mother. He didn't have forefathers that preceded him. So the DNA, the God DNA traces all the way back. And David had through his obedience to God. And because God created David, he had the God DNA. So the God DNA is what connects Christ to being the son of David through time travel. Christ was able to bypass the sin that was in David's bloodline. And therefore, that's why Christ is also the son of God. Christ, who is God, inserted himself into the time and space continuum. So the God DNA, Christ being the last Adam, just took directly the God DNA, the Holy Spirit without measure. Okay. And that's how he is also in the lineage of Judah, all right? Because the God DNA was established through faith and through God being their creator through the lineage of Judah because Esau was cut off. Terah, who was Abraham's father, was cut off. He was a pagan worshiper, all right? So let's go down to verse 18 because I don't have to go through all of these genealogies, you get the point. I just explained it there. All right. Verse 18, Matthew chapter one. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother, Mary was betrothed to Joseph. That means engaged to Joseph. But before they came together, but before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit, not of Joseph, of the Holy Spirit. Okay, this was before they came together. Verse 19, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. See, Joseph was a just man because of faith. See, everything without faith, it's impossible to please God. People just take that scripture lightly. No, it took an abnormal amount of faith for Joseph to look at his wife and say, this woman is pregnant of the Holy Spirit. And when any other carnal man obviously would have been outraged. Okay, but because of faith, because he was a just man, and he also got a visit from the angel of the Lord. So God, understanding the Most High and his infinite mercy, not wanting to put more on Joseph than he can bear, he sent him a tangible angel. So Joseph is sitting here bridging between the fleshly realm and the spirit realm, looking at this angel of the Lord who's verifying the tangible with the spiritual. Okay. Verse 20. But while he thought about these things, again, behold, an angel of the Lord 
appeared to him in a dream. So Joseph, and he's a man in the flesh. He's thinking, how did this woman become pregnant? Scripture says, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take you, Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all of this, verse 22, all of this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, again, is Isaiah 7, 14 being repeated. Behold. The virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. You don't name a child God with us if he is not God. All right. But that's a whole nother video. Verse 24. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. And took to him his wife and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Jesus. So to say otherwise, you'll be saying that Joseph fornicated with Mary. Because as I read earlier, Mary was betrothed, engaged to mean they weren't officially married. Okay, when Jesus was conceived. All right, so, so to be saying otherwise is to say Christ was born in fornication, which is heresy. All right, so let's quickly go to Luke chapter 3. Okay, I'm going to skim through this real quickly. Verse 23 says, Now Jesus himself began his ministry about the age of 30, being as was supposed, being as was supposed, meaning this was information. That was given to the rest of the world who were carnal. That's what this means. He was as supposed the son of Joseph, the son of Heli. Okay. Then it just goes through the gene genealogies. Then you get down to verse 37, verse 36, the son of Canaan, the son of Ashvad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, Methuselah, Enoch, Jared. Mahalel, the son of Canaan, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. Verse 38. There's your time travel. You got all these names from verse 23 to 38. Descendants that's in the God DNA, but also the faith which pleases God, perpetuated through all these men bloodline. A lot of men were cut off. There, there are men who came before Abraham, who came before David, but they're not mentioned in here. Not because of short version, no, because the faith bloodline is different. So Christ is connected to David according to the faith. He's a greater David. Christ is the greater Adam. You see that. But because he inserted himself into the time and space continuum, that is how he is the son of God. You have these Hebrew Israelites out here teaching that Jesus Christ is not God. And that's a damnable heresy. All right. Joseph fucked Mary. He certainly did. But that's not how Christ was conceived. You got to read. And don't let your flesh write checks your soul cannot cash in the afterlife because your flesh will certainly send you to hell and it won't show up it's about fates and gates you gotta have faith and you're gonna need god's grace